This is GABNET, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Until midnight tonight from New York City. Going up to Worcester. 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 Worcester, Massachusetts. Uh, it is uh, Stephen Kravitz, ladies and gentlemen. Um, are, uh, are you doing any comedy anywhere? I may be doing this, uh, this uh, Best Cafe here in Worcester. I may be doing it soon. I'm, I'm still talking to them. Yeah, because the thing is that uh, uh, I wonder, it's been a while since you've actually gotten up on a stage and done comedy, right? Right, right, right. It's been a while. Well, I have this fear in my life that I have forgotten how to drive a car. Okay? Does that make sense? Well, I have this fear I've forgotten how to be funny. Well, that's exactly what I was going to ask. If I'm afraid of not being able to drive, are you afraid that you're going to get up on stage and forget your craft? Or do, you, or do you think it will come back to you as what, what we call memory? You know, uh, they call it. Right. But, well, you know, the thing is, like Slayton just posted something on Facebook about how he's going to do uh, flappers in Burbank. And he said he'll do as much material as he can remember. Yeah. And in you know, that, and that's basically well, the same thing with me. Well, also knowing Bobby Zach as much material as he is capable of doing. Uh, uh, given the woke attitudes of people and the kind of material he used to indulge in. Right. You know, he's not exactly going to be welcomed by a lot of those audiences if he starts doing a lot of that old material. You know, if he starts going after the Chinese, oh, how dare you go after Asians? Right. You know I mean? He was one of those comics like Rickles, in case people don't know, who went after everybody. Right. You know, he took no prisoners. Right. And and that was a wonderful part about his act. It, it, when he assaults everybody, you get the feeling this guy isn't racist. You know, he's just. No, because he's, he's an equal opportunity uh, uh, offender. Well, I mean, uh, I think uh, uh, racial groups like to make fun of each other, don't they? When they're with each other. Why shouldn't an outsider make fun of them, too? As, well, as long as what he's doing isn't mean, isn't coming from a mean standpoint. You know you get right. what I'm saying? Right. Yeah. Um, but I'll tell you what I do mind is a comedian who goes up and does that kind of material and then apologizes for it after every joke. You know. Yeah. So. But anyway, so you're you kind of a little you're a little worried about what happens when you finally get up on stage again. A little bit, yeah. a little bit. I'm wondering how I'm going to get into it. I don't remember how I used to start my set. Really? That's what I'm, that's what I'm having trouble with. Is how do I go from being introduced to getting that first laugh? What what did I used to do? Well, what most comedians do is they have some kind of joke which establishes who they are. Right. You know, the, right. you have to, the first, I often said the first five minutes of any comedy act are the five most important because it's the five minutes in which you're taking people from the world they're in and bringing right. them into yours. That's right. You establish character. And if, especially if you have a weird kind of sense of humor and you're coming from a weird area, you have to make them understand how to understand the jokes you're doing. That's right. And like I always hate it when comics said I'm too smart for the room. Yeah. Too smart for the room. If you're that smart, t- give them the information to laugh at your jokes. Right, exactly. exactly. Give them the background to where the jokes come from. That's right. You know? Mm-hmm. I always say I'm too hip for the room. No, you're not. You're just a bad comic. Do you know what I always hated about the uh, the uh, uh, way uh, comedy was perceived, stand-up comedy was perceived, is people would look at that and say, that, uh, that's easy. Right. 
you know. Right. Uh, and and people don't understand how terribly hard it is. Right. And, and that it's a craft. It's not just something that, you know, everybody can do. And the reason it looks easy is because the person doing it makes it look easy. Right. I mean, right. Uh, I often say, you say about Bobby Slate, and the thing that always got me about his act is I, I suddenly watch his act, or I'd go into a club where he's playing, and I'd watch his act. And he'd start his act, and I'd go, he's got all new material? You know? Right. And and uh, I'm going, oh, well, I have to move this down. When I get messages on my computer, it comes into the screen here on the show. <laughs> anyway, uh, uh so I mean, um, what was I saying? Where was I? Who you were I? talking about Slayton and ha having new material. Yeah. Oh, Although yeah. Sometimes. Yeah. yeah. I, mean, you know, I, I would say he's got all new material, huh? And he go into something. Blah blah blah. blah. He come from it. Every time he started his act, he would come from a different direction. But once he got into the meat of his act, they go, "Oh, this is the act I know by heart." Right. You know? Right. 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 Sometimes one new joke can. Light a spark in your whole routine. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know what I mean? Yep. Especially if it works. If a no joke works, it's the greatest. Then you got to figure out where to put it. Does it go in the beginning of the set? Does it go in the middle of the set? Does it go at the end of the set? You know, where does this joke fit best? Yeah. How good is it? And where does it right. fit? Yeah. Yeah. Did it get a laugh the first night because it was fresh and got no laugh the set? That's just like when I was starting out. Yeah. You know, I'd go to one club and I'd do a set and it would kill. And I'd go to another club and do the exact same set and it would bomb. And that's when I realized that each each audience had their own rhythm. You know, I had to, even though I'm leading the audience, I got to listen to their rhythm. Is it like, it's like jazz, Alex. Yeah, well, it's what, very much like jazz. Would you, would you take your act and you have a whole bunch of jokes you're going to do, a whole bunch of routines you're going to do. Right. Uh, and uh, and all of a sudden you're playing the audience and you have an innate sense. Most good good comedians have an innate sense of the of the crowd of the audience. Right. And all of a sudden you realize, well, you're, you're automatically editing in your mind while you're doing your act. Sure. And do you ever then? Or I have to go in a different direction. Yeah. But you then sometimes ditch a planned joke because you know it isn't going to land on that audience? Right. Really? Right. Sure. See, sure, so, you you edit while you're on stage. Yeah. So I want you people to understand that th this is what does not make it an easy craft to do because you're constantly editing in your mind while you're up there. You're judging the audience. You're feeling the temperature of the room. I mean, all these things play into how you do. And, um, you know, I think you could probably take the best comedian around, the guy who you figure is bomb-proof, like Jerry Seinfeld, and ask him, have you bombed recently? And he will say yes, probably, at least in his oh, every, every Alex, every comic bombs. It's just that the longer you do it, the less times you bomb. Yeah. It's like when you first started out, if you bombed, you thought my career is over. I'm just going to kill myself. Fuck this. I'm, I'm not funny. Oh, yeah. Then as after you're a seasoned pro, if you have a bad set, you just say, well, I got that out of the way. That won't happen again for a while. Yeah. You but, know what but, I mean? But that that's after you've been seasoned for a while that you come right. to that. When you're first starting out. Every time they don't laugh, it's, it's a big blow to your ego. To, you know. Oh, you're kidding? It's like a knife in your heart. I mean, the amount of of uh, what you're giving up of yourself, okay, uh, is amazing. Because you get up there every night, stand out on a stage, raw, okay? Right. And, and no, no props, just you and a microphone and your wit. And your wit, okay? That's it. And if you bomb... It is such a crushing blow to your self-esteem that it's un, un, unbelievable, folks. Because when you're up on that stage dying, you're dying alone. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's like there's this old comic joke, Alex. Speaking of dying. Yeah, of course. A bunch of comics are sitting around together and they say, did you hear about Bob? He played Atlantic City. He killed. 
they they renewed him for for another two weeks. Unbelievable how good he did. And everybody goes, no, we didn't hear, we didn't hear. And they go, did you hear about Hank? He played Vegas. He killed. He killed so badly. He was so good that they gave him a gold watch and signed him for a year-long residency. He was that good. And they all sit around going, no, we didn't hear. We didn't hear anything. Now, did you hear about Paul? Played Houston. He bombed. And everybody goes, we heard. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's, right? Yeah, I mean, it will linger. It will linger. It will absolutely linger. Although, as you learn, you know, when I first started out, I never thought there was a bad audience. I always thought if I didn't do well, it was my fault. And then, after years and years of doing it, there are bad audiences. Oh, yeah, absolutely. And, and, and they're and absolutely the, bad audiences. Can you imagine the comic who had to go up on stage the night after 9-11? You know? Just any, right. anywhere, you know, because the mood of the country was dour at that point. Oh, yeah. You know, uh, and, and to go to, into an audience and suddenly be essentially frivolous. I um, think I did that. I did 9-11. I did that night with Will Durst at the Punchline in San Francisco. How'd it go? It went well. Really? It didn't go great, but it went well. Right. Probably would have gone better if there hadn't been a 9-11. Well, a lot of things would have gone better if there hadn't been a 9-11. Yeah. I'd like to do a comedy show by starting off and showing uh, the carnage in, in uh, Ukraine. Okay. And then saying, now here's Stephen Kravitz. Oh, great. <laughs> and see if, you great. Can, see if you can overcome the mood of the room at that point. Well, that's like Alex way. When I was like really confident that I would play a room that I knew I was coming back to no matter what mm -hmm. I was going to get rebooked and I would sometimes start out in the hole I would just kind of like start out with negative stuff and see how long it took me to bring the audience around to my side just as a little experiment as an experiment yeah well, well you know what's great is a room that knows you okay I mean Seinfeld is kind of bomb proof only in that he's Seinfeld Right. And when people right. have just paid three hundred dollars a ticket for a seat to one of his shows, they want to laugh. Okay, that's the biggest incentive to laugh. When you're paying right. two dollars and a two drink minimum, you sit there with your arms folded going, Come on, pal, make me laugh. I've but, seen I saw Robin Bomb. Really? Yeah. I mean bad not bomb bomb. Not bad, bad, but like people were going after a few minutes after they got over the uh the glaze of him being Robin Williams after they got over being starstruck, mm -hmm. then it was like, make me laugh. You would think he was bomb proof only because, see, I, I have a certain reservations about Robin and what he did. And part of that reservation is that a lot of it was what people describe as word salad. Uh, and it, it, it's, what do you mean? It's things that sound funny but aren't particularly funny. And another person who engaged in word salad was Bob Dylan. He would write lyrics. Uh, Johnny's in the basement mixing up the medicine. I'm on the pavement talking about the government. And none of it made sense. But everybody went, that's great. That's a great folk song. You know? Right. Uh, and the same thing was true of Robin. He would riff and he would say things, and grab his crotch and do but he, he, I never heard him actually sit down and say, tell a joke. Or, or I don't know, he never, he never made me laugh hard, okay? I mean. You know who made me laugh the hardest was Michael Pritchard. Really? My, when I first got to San Francisco, he was like the king of San Francisco. Yeah. And I saw him one night at the Holy City Zoo, and I laughed. I swear to God, I could have peed my pants. I laughed so hard. Really? I, and I was I, brand new too. I was brand spanking new at the time. I had a, my, my story about Michael Pritchard is we were doing it was Christmas time and they asked me to join a bunch of people in Union Square, a bunch of personalities all getting up singing Christmas songs. All right, so I'm standing next to Pritchard and of course Pritchard is what, eight hundred feet tall. He's huge. Yeah, eight hundred feet tall. Yeah, six hundred pounds. He's a big boy. And in fact, I have a picture of him, which people might find somewhere, with me and Seinfeld and Pollock and Dana Carvey and Robin. 
I, and, oh, really? Yes, and Michael Pritchard. And I'm looking up at Michael. And I mean, I'm looking up at Michael. Right, he's a big guy. Yeah. But anyway, so we're there in Union Square singing. He's standing next to me. And, we, you know, jingle bells, jingle bells. I can do that, all right? I can do uh, In a Winter Wonderland, whatever, you know. All of a sudden, they start singing O Little Town of Bethlehem. And the Jew in me suddenly comes to the comes forward and says you can't sing this this is not a song for a jew to sing right 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 so i'm just standing there going <laughs> not saying the words i'm just kind of humming a little bit <laughs> and uh we have to preface this by saying that that uh the thing that probably saved pritchard's life is when he quit alcohol because supposedly he was the meanest most horrible drunk that you could ever encounter when he was drinking. When I saw him that first time at the Holy City Zoo, he was drunk. Yeah, and he was standing, so he looks down at me while I'm kind of not singing and humming. He says, come on, Alex, couldn't hurt. <laughs> and I look back up at Pritchard and I said, hey, Michael, have a drink, couldn't hurt. Oh, God, <laughs> did you really? <laughs> yes. Because I felt that what he said, you know, I'm Jewish. Come on. I don't sing right. old little town of Bethlehem. Right. Right? So, you know. But uh, uh, but Pritchard, I never I never saw him in his prime, okay? Oh, I did. And, I, and that one night. And I think there were so many comics that then came to San Francisco who were so good, including yourself, you know, that he kind of had to take a back. Uh, a back seat to those people, you know. Right. I mean, uh, uh, there was Robin, of course. It was a Bay Area comic, you know. Right. Uh, I mean, and there were all there was Dana Carvey, and there were all these other people that were coming up and coming up pretty big. Kevin Pollock. Kevin Pollock. Yeah. So I mean, it it uh, people don't even remember this. That Kevin Pollock was in fact uh, a comedian. In fact, an impressionist. In fact, I had they did a roast of me when I was first at I uh, was at uh, I think I was still at uh, the Camel. They were doing okay. a, a roast of me, and the guy who headed up the roast and got it all together was Kevin. Oh, really? Yeah, right. Yeah. So uh, it was uh, a little early in my career to give me a roast, but what the hell? I I said okay. Right. You know. That's like we roasted, we roasted, I forget who we roasted at the other cafe. And we had a meeting before the roast. Mm -hmm. And Chip Miller and Bob Ayers were asking the comics what they had prepared. And he asked me and I said, I have nothing prepared. You know, mm -hmm. so he was kind of like put off by that. And then when we got up on stage, because I had nothing prepared. The other comics roasted me instead of me roasting the comic that we were roasting <laughs> because I had no material. Do you remember who the comic was you were roasting? It was either Durst or Gonzo. Oh, okay. All right. Uh, I'm not quite, I'm not, I can't remember which it was. Which reminds me, I have to call Durst today. You know, I haven't called him in a couple of weeks. He's hard to get a hold of because sometimes he just yeah. doesn't answer his iPad. So, you know. Well, yeah. No, he's had a rough couple of years. Oh God, you know. I mean, it's the worst thing I think that can happen to a comic is having a stroke, because you're going to lose one of the abilities that you need. You need right. you need to be able to stand up, and you need to be able to verbalize as perfectly as possible. Right. You know. Now he's well. He, how's his? Isn't his speech his excellent? Speech is fine. He still so, you know, I mean, don't forget, Alex, I performed a lot near the end of my career sitting on a stool. Well, I told him, I said, if you come out in a wheelchair and start doing your comedy, number one, you'll be different than any other comic. And secondly, there's no way they're going to heckle you. Well, right. <laughs> you know, they, you, it, you've got a certain safety net there, you know, and you can still do your material. You've still got right. timing. You've still got observations. You know, they probably right. building up as you've been lying in that bed for these many years. So I hope somehow he makes some kind of a comeback because I, I miss him so much. You know, yeah, me too. Uh, the community misses him. 
Well, he used to do the show on a regular basis. And he's smart and he's, you know, I mean, no, he's not the best comedian that ever lived, okay? Neither are you. No. And certainly never, not, never said I was. Certainly not me. I'm not a comic at all, although I have stood up on a stage for 15 minutes and killed. But it was, and this is what I was going to bring up, it was with an audience who knew who I was. Right. And so all right. I had to do was, like, hit on certain things which I said on the radio which were funny, and people would laugh because they'd heard them before. Right. You know? So when right. I went on stage, I, I I always was very confident when I went up because I never... I never actually bombed. I just, you know, I had this built-in crowd who came to my concerts to see my friends, the comics. Right, you know? and Alex, it was really hard to bomb on one of your shows. Oh, they, they people there loved comedy, and right, they, and they love. And the thing is, the reason you didn't bomb because you were on the show, and right, that, and that's where you established who you were. And the hell, right. hell with the first five minutes, you didn't need it. You, they already right. knew. Your meter, your tone, what you were doing, you know. Right. So, and and they just wanted you to do well. They were rooting oh yeah. for you. Oh, yeah, absolutely. So, you know, uh, I, I don't think, I can't think of any comedian at any of my shows who ever really bombed. No, because I they, can't. Because they had already been pre-sold to the audience on my radio right. show. Yeah. And yeah, and we had a pretty strong, well, you had a very strong phone. I mean, people would get up at four o'clock in the morning to be in your studio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those were the good old days. It's, I have a, a quote uh, from uh, the movie, The Roaring Twenties. It's on my, you have to put a little quote on your Facebook page, right? And my, right. my quote is, I used to be a big shot. Uh, because in, I, have a, I have a book of matches that says on it, I was hot in the 80s. <laughs> Yeah, but the thing was that that um, uh, in uh, the Roaring Twenties, Jimmy Cagney uh, gets killed by hum shot by Humphrey Bogart, and he runs down the street, and then he falls on uh, on the steps of what uh, I guess is is a church, and he's lying there, and his girlfriend is cradling him in his arms, and then he dies, and then War I think Ward Bond, who was playing the cop, comes over and says, uh, "Who was he?" And she says, "Whatever his name was in the picture," and he says, "And what did he do?" He says, she looks up at him and he says, he used to be a big shot. <laughs> you know? And so through my entire career, that particular line kept ringing in my ears every time I was performing or anytime things were going good, I thought he used to be a big shot. Right, 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 right. Yeah. So those were the days when I was a big shot, you know, and, and looking back on it, I didn't realize how big a big shot I was. At the time, it didn't seem like that to me, you know. Uh, it was just one big party. We were we were pretty popular. Yeah, yeah we, we it was great. It was great, and you know what was also great is that I had the ability to make people like you bankable, right. bankable in, in oh, the yeah. Bay Area. And so you could go into a club and say, you know, I do the Alex Bennett show all the time. What are you going to pay me? Right, right. And we would plug our gigs on your show. Yeah. And when it was guys like you, it was guys like per, uh, like Pearl, when it was guys like Bubbles, uh, right. guys like Durst, it gave, nothing gave me more pleasure than the fact that I gave you uh, a better paycheck at these clubs. Right. Who otherwise, you, gave us a, you gave us a platform. Well, you, I also gave you a, a giant stick you could hit these owners with and say, right. hey, you know, if you don't want me, I'll go to the next club, and you know, they know me from the Alex Bennett program. Right. So I, I, I felt good about doing that, you know. I actually developed a cult following from your show. Real, cult following? What what happened? They all used to meet with torches in the middle of a field somewhere and burn you. And Pretty everything. much, and storm the stage. <laughs> no, I would look in the audience, and there'd be the same twenty people that I'd see at like every show. There was this one couple, I would see them at every single show I did. Yeah. And I even said to them, you know this shit better than I do. Why don't you get up and do it? Yeah, yeah. What's my next line? I forgot it. Right, <laughs> right, 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 right. Here's the setup. What's the punchline? I, I never completely understood that, only because you hear a joke and you hear a joke, right? Right. But I was told by a lot of comics, and I guess it's true, that people, when they go to see you perform, want to see you play your hits. Right. 
You know, right. They they want to say to their friend, "Hey, listen to this one. This one's good." Right. You know. Right. 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 And then you. But they the also job. want to hear something new. Yeah, you throw that in too and surprise them. But, right. Uh, I'm telling you, one new joke can 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 revitalize your whole act. Really. really? Oh yeah. Well, we'll have to find out what that joke is someday. Yeah. <laughs> or some of the jokes that you you had that revitalized. Hey, always good talking to you, Stephen. You're the you're the best. I uh, thanks, Alan. And I can hardly wait till you come down and see us. Uh, right. When you get a chance, when you get a shot, you know. I would take the train down. Right. Uh, because to, you don't want to park in my neighborhood. Yeah. It's not that it's dangerous. Not that you're not going to have a car the next morning, but you, the amount of tickets you'll get at a hundred bucks a piece, you don't want to deal with. You know? No kidding. Yeah. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, that's Stephen Kravitz. Let's give him a big, big Alex Bennett goodbye. Uh, goodbye, Stephen. This is GabNet, the Great American Broadcast Network, now in its seventh year. Talk like you've never heard it before. Well, hello, 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 hello. I uh, hope you enjoyed Steve Kravitz. I always do. He'll be here again next week. Uh, let me see here. Do I have anything to tell you? Nothing, really. Not nothing much. I only have two people waiting to come on here, but what the hell? If uh, if it's just them, it's two people I really like. Okay, so here they come. Let me see here. There's Charlie Wallace. Uh, wait a minute. Jeff's there, but he's not there. <laughs> oh, there's Jeff. Okay, there's Jeff. Hello, Jeff. I love Stephen Kravitz. He's there. great. Yeah, yeah, he is terrific. <laughs> Anyway, so where where do you figure everybody is tonight? I guess I've just you know, I've I've uh, I've, I've I guess I've pushed it pushed my luck too far, right? You know, and oh, and uh, Jeff, just turn your mic on. Just turn your mic on. Yeah. How are you? <laughs> you know what we're gonna have to do with Jeff? Is we're gonna have to send somebody out to his place every night. <laughs> just push the buttons for him. You know, but you're okay yeah. now. You see, you don't have any audio in the background or anything like that. You know, so uh, anyway, uh, Charlie Wallace is the is Doctor Death. He's the keeper of the flame. Yeah. On COVID, it's getting worse again, right? Yeah, the numbers are starting to go back up. You know what's going on? Well, I know what's going back up. Why it's going back up? Because we said, oh, you no know, need for the masks. Eh, yeah. Try. Forget about the about the uh, vaccinations. Just don't breathe on each other, you know. Really, that's my, what, that, that, that's my son weird. went to a party mm -hmm. last week. Mm -hmm. Whole bunch of them got sick. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. How about your son? He thinks he's okay. Yeah. Well, we went to a ship. We went to sit shiva the other day, uh, uh, which I, it's hard for me to say sit shiva. I tend to want to say shit shiva. <laughs> uh, yeah. But we went to this shiva thing and uh, thing. <laughs> what kind of Jew am I? We went to the shiva damn thing, yeah. Uh, but anyway, we went to shiva and uh, there were a lot of people there. Nobody was wearing a mask. So I hope that I didn't sit shiva in order to get COVID. That's what I'm worried about, you know. But I wasn't about to wear a mask because nobody else was. And, uh, you know, if everybody else is swimming naked, I guess I'm going to take my clothes off, too. You know. Hello, Alan. How you doing? I'm doing uh, pretty good. How are you doing, Alex? I'm doing all right. You know, uh, I, I went for another walk today. Today I walked a mile and a half. Okay. Didn't get dizzy yeah, or but, worn out? No, I'll tell you what the problem was. I'm having trouble with my back. My back hurts when I walk. And uh, I I think that's maybe just from not walking for a long time. Yeah. So I'm just gonna yeah. I'm just gonna do it every day and push it. You know, maybe do a mile, do a little bit more than a mile if I can. Do a mile and a half like I did today. And how about the yeah. first couple of weeks every other day and build up your strength that way? No, I I I want to torture myself as long as the weather is nice. The problem is. The weather has been so sporadic. Today it was beautiful. It was like 80 degrees. Tomorrow mm. it's going to be 60. You know? Yeah, but it rained here for... Uh, oh, it rained here too. 
for like a, a half an hour, an hour or something yeah, like that. Yeah, yeah. You know, I mean, the weather has just been ridiculous. Just been, you know. But anyway, so I took a, you know, I took a walk today, another walk today, and uh, um, uh, you know, uh, I'm trying to, I'm trying to get my stamina back up again. I mean, come on, it's been two years since yeah. I really had some good walking. Every day I used to take a walk. Well, I, I did during the pandemic. I took walks, so I'm um, that. It's about about a year since I was walking every day, and I would do about a mile and a half every day. Just take the walk and. It, I didn't breathe heavy, and it, my back didn't hurt or anything like that. And now it's like I go, I'm two blocks down the street. Can I make it to the third block? You know, <laughs> it, I guess I guess that all has to do with uh, COVID, and you know, whatever. I don't know. But anyway, so COVID numbers are up, right? Yeah. Yep. Yep. Yeah. Back up. Yeah. Yep. How many deaths in the United States today? Eight hundred and fourteen. Eight hundred and fourteen. Yeah. It's, it's not a lot compared to what it was. No, but it was only like 500 last week. Yeah. You know? now, now, let me ask you this. Uh, it's uh, what? How many people have had COVID so far? What's the current number on that? Because we're, uh, we're going towards a million. Yeah, it, it uh, have died. Yeah, we've got 988,000 deaths. A billion people around the world have had COVID. Well, that doesn't matter. We're talking about deaths now. Deaths, yeah. You know. But six million have died around the world. So. Yeah, right. Let me see. How does that compare to uh, the Spanish flu? Spanish flu, I think, was something like 50 million, wasn't it? Worldwide, yeah. Yeah. But then that was a time when we didn't have antibiotics. We didn't have uh, uh, intubation. We didn't have all the things that we have now. So, you know, it's less only because we have the some of what somewhat of the knowledge although in the beginning remember we had no knowledge at all we were just you know you know what stopped it people wearing masks yeah i if think we that... didn't if we didn't if we were a smart people and we and we had not come up with a vaccine if everybody wore masks for a couple months the virus would just go away yeah but but the vaccine didn't hurt either no, no. The no, vaccine, it's a, it's I think, big... is what nipped it in the bud. At least no. it stopped it from becoming a deadly disease. You know. Well, I don't know. Most a million people in this yeah, country are dead. Like it's a pretty deadly disease. Well, yeah, but I mean, it, it, it the the uh, the, the uh, deadliness of it has subsided substantially. I mean, people now still get it, but they just get sick, and that's yep. it. I mean, well, I, obviously yeah. that isn't totally the case because if we have 800 people today that died, mm -hmm. people are getting more than sick. They're well, dying. Well, how many of those people were They're vaccinated? They're not vaccinated. The vaccinated. ones that are dying are not vaccinated. As a rule, that's correct. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what we're talking about is the vaccinations change the whole dynamic oh, yeah. of the disease. You get your fourth vaccine, Alex? Oh, yeah. Yeah. I, I, in fact, uh, here, I'll just to prove it. I believe you. Well, I just feel like I got mine too. I feel like proving it to everybody. I bet Jeff got his too. So no. Let's see here. No. Hold on. Hold on a second. No. Can you see? Oh yeah. Can you see that where it says yep. four? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It says four. Yep. And if I go deeper into this thing, it shows my vaccination details, and uh, see I have all the vaccination details of where I had it, what lot number it was, and everything. Mm -hmm. So anyway, so. You got yours, right, Jeff? No. I, matter of fact, they're telling me not to get it yet. Why? Why? Well, because I had a problem with another medication, and they're not quite sure what medication really caused some problems that I had. Mm -hmm. And they're trying to clean out some of the medications that I'm taking. Yeah, but what, well, how? But isn't this a different kind of thing? This is a vaccination. This is not yeah. a daily pill you take. You know. They think that the medication medication will affect the vaccination. Yeah. Oh, they're thinking that some of your, oh, some of your, some of the stuff you're already taking will affect the vaccination as opposed to the other yeah. way around. I see. Yeah. yeah. You gotta you gotta have the complex stuff. Yeah. And you pay extra. 
Yeah. 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 <laughs> Yeah. yeah, well, I'm trying to cut down on my my medicine. I take I'm taking oh. way too much medicine, you know, and so I got rid of one, and I'm going to try and get rid of another, which I think I don't need. It's a it's a booster for my statin, which my doctor gave to me at one point because uh, all of a sudden I went in and he said your cholesterol is all, off the roof and we've got you on a statin. And you're, you know, you're, 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 it's off the roof. So here, take this other thing, and it will, it will, it will amplify the, the stat. Okay. So I started taking it. All of a sudden, I looked in my pill box, and I realized that of all, you know, I make my pills out for a whole month. And the one pill I had left out was my cholesterol pill, just before I went down and got my cholesterol from the doctor. So I really don't need that, you know, statin that is kind of a, uh, a booster statin. And that's kind of an expensive drug, so I'd rather not take it at all anyway. But I'd like to get myself down to like a handful of drugs. I mean, every time I take my pills, then I throw in my, uh, my vitamins and things like that that I need and the little extra things and the aspirin, the baby aspirin. And by the time I'm through, I've got this thing rolling, this whole thing rolling around in my stomach, you know, uh, of, of pills. And I just, I'd rather not, not take pills. My friend Shecky said that what he did, he stopped taking pills altogether. He just said, one day he just said, to hell with it. And he said he feels a hell of a lot better, you know, so. <clears throat> but anyway, welcome, folks, to the show that the young kids really <laughs> love to listen to. Because we all talk about how fucked up it is getting older, right? Yeah, getting yeah. older is not for sissies. Yep, that's right. 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 So anyway, so, uh, um, you know, uh, here we are. We're all gathered here tonight. You know what I saw in, um, in, on Drudge tonight? And he loves this kind of headline. I mean, it makes him, it, uh, I think Drudge actually, when he knows he can do this kind of headline, he's got his dick in his hand and is jerking off, you know. Uh, and it, it simply read, uh, uh, oh, pol pole shocker. That's what he always likes to use is the term pole shocker, right? And the pole shocker was that Biden's uh, Quinnipiac acceptance poll or whatever is 33%. He has a 33% approval rating. Now, I want to know. How many got to be false news. They, they meant to say minus 33%. Yeah, but it was 33% is approval already. And my question is, uh, why? I mean, do you would, would you agree with that approval rating? Do you think he deserves it? No. Uh, why? Because he's done a lot of things. Look, look at unemployment. It's the lowest it's been in 50 years. Okay, but try and tell that to the person who then goes to the store and he's spending a third as more for groceries than he did, say, five months ago. You're talking That's about five Oh, hmm? oh you, I thought you said Trump. Trump's I mean, approval rating. I'm sorry. No, Biden's approval rating. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. sorry. My bad. Okay. I mean, no, I, I, I think he deserves a higher one. Well, I mean, he, he's he getting money for COVID, but yeah. Yeah. The economy's screwed, and I, I don't know that it's totally his fault. I think uh, a lot of people that are working or that have to drive, a lot of their uh, costs are going towards gasoline. Mm -hmm. And you guys got it cheap. We're paying $6 a gallon here in the Bay Area. So, you know, but... Yeah, uh, but, but here, here's the deal. You know, I think he's doing several things wrong. That are causing that thirty-three percent. Okay. Think first thing he's doing wrong is he's not selling the very thing you just said. He's selling it very badly. <coughs> he's not saying, you know, hey, look, you know, uh, uh, employment is up and and wages are up and uh, um, on and on and on. There's a whole litany of things he could say about accomplishments and look what we did with the COVID. look you know you're able to get out and go to restaurants now and and on and on but he doesn't do a very good job of selling it and part of the reason is he really doesn't look good giving a speech 
Nope. He just looks horrible. Um, Stutters. He's missing oh. his lines. <clears throat> yeah. He's not a really good speaker. Well, he used I, to be. No, he, he, well, he, was, he was always a stutterer. He had oh. a st pronounced yeah. stutter when he was a kid. And it's never really left him. He just knows how to control it. But as he's gotten older, he has less control over it. So that makes him sound like he's hesitant. He doesn't know what he's talking about. You know, he doesn't. In other words, the president's main job is cosmetic. And that cosmetic job is to instill confidence in the people who hired you. You know, and when you're not doing that, you got a problem. And he looks terrible up there. His eyes are always almost shut, right? Uh, he could have used an eye lift, you know, to open his eyes <laughs> yeah. like mine are here, right? Oh, you got the health care. You can do it. Y yeah, and, and he could have. He should have done that. Uh, he he, as I say, is hesitant when he talks. Doesn't sell it. Sell the the the, the goods very well. And I think that's a problem. I think that's a real problem. And I think it's going to hurt us in uh, in in November. Uh, but uh, he doesn't instill confidence in people. I'm, I'm sure that if we had the same problems today, that when uh, 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 if Obama were president today, he would sell all that stuff pretty well. Yeah. And he would give you the pep talks, you know, and he would make you feel that things are good and things are going to get better. Mm -hmm. yeah. Biden doesn't seem to have that ability. So what should he do? He should talk less. I mean, every day he's on the air. Every day he's giving another speech. He's like Trump with Twitter. Yeah, he's like Trump with Twitter. He's there every day. And quite frankly, I just look at my screen and go, shut the I, fuck up. I you told know? Shecky, Alex, I can't watch him anymore. Yeah. Like, I just can't. When he's on, I'll turn the TV off. Yeah, yeah. Uh, mm. And and I think that, uh, that, that he should really have other people speak for him. You know, send well, out... I, Huh? What, what I was that? thinking the vice president would be beneficial if she spoke quite a bit. Yeah, they, yeah. They, they, she has a bad approval rating, but only because, right. like most vice presidents, nobody ever sees her. Yeah, you never see him. You know, never see her. he's yeah. not using her for what she does best. That's, right. that's get up and speak about the administration and to defend the administration and so on. But there are a lot of other people you can get. If it's a, if it's an economic issue, you get your economic guy. If it's your health issue, you get Dr. Fauci. If it's something else, you get somebody else. And keep him off the screen and only let him get on the screen when occasionally there's a really important thing he's got to talk about not have a photo opportunity with two tractors, you know? Uh, I mean, yep. I just, I, I think that's the way. <laughs> and I don't think he's doing a terrible job, but I don't think he's selling the fact of how good a job he's doing. I rest my case. Yeah, you know? I agree with you. Yeah, I think he's not doing a great job. I yeah. think he needs somebody to get out and speak for him. Yep, yep. A PR person, be it the vice president or somebody else. Well, as I said again, you know, there are any number of people you can put up there front and center to, to do Absolutely. this, you know, and he should do something about that. It would be, Absolutely. It would be very good, you know, but uh, so th at that's, this rate, he'll never win in 2024. Uh, I well, well I don't think I don't think he's going to run in 2024. I mean, yeah, I don't think he's going to run either. He'd be 80 years old. And I don't Kamala think, I, will I, probably run. I don't no, think she no, can I, I, I don't think Donald is going to run. You should you should hope and pray he does run. Maybe maybe Cuomo uh, will run, and uh... you, you see, everybody's afraid of Trump. But you got to remember this about Trump: Trump never, ever won a presidential election in the popular vote. Oh, you know, never, never. The first one he won electoral vote, you know, yeah. Yeah. and the, with the help of Putin. Okay, uh, uh, the. Uh, so that that's that's for starters. You know? Now Putin set him aside like a piece of trash. Yeah, but I don't think you need. Uh, I don't think he's going to wind up running. I just think the Republicans are smarter than that. I think they'll go for somebody like Ron DeSantis or whatever. In which case, I'm going, boy, are you really crazy? Yeah, no shit. Now, um, uh, what's his name from California? Uh, your governor. Uh, 
Yeah, Gavin Newsom. He, Gavin Newsom. He's probably a pretty powerful Republican. He's, I mean, Democrat. He he survived a recall that was, you know, a lot of people thought it was a sure thing that he would get recalled, and he survived that. He's running for governor again, of course. Yeah, but I he he is there is talk he's thinking of running for president. Oh, really? In which case, I think he would. I said a long time ago that one day he would be president of the United States. He's got the looks, you know. Mm -hmm. He's got movie star good looks. Oh you yeah, know, he speaks Definitely. well. He's used to being around money. He's got it's money. It's just that he's got baggage. Who's this again? Gavin you know, Newsom. You're, you're not talking about his oh, best yeah. friend's wife baggage, are you? Well, yes, I am. That's Listen, when you're running for president, they pull everything out they can get. So. Yeah, he'll defend it. He'll get his best friend to come up there and say, it's okay, you know, no problem. So. Didn't, didn't he wind up marrying her? Uh -uh. Newsom? Newsom? No, he just, uh -uh. he's not seeing her anymore. No, he was just either. banging his best friend. He was banging his wife. best friend's wife. Uh, well, I that was while he know. was mayor of San Francisco. Yeah, absolutely. Here's a good question. Here's a tr quick trivia question for you. I don't want to sound like I'm doing the Jack Bishop show. He'll be doing that <laughs> later. But this is a trivia question. What major um, social change did Gavin Newsom bring about? Well, I think, oh, didn't he do the same-sex marriage? That's yeah. right. That's yeah, right. He, he was the first one in the country yep. to bring it up. And not only to bring it up, but to make it legal in the city of San Francisco, San Francisco. for people to engage in same-sex marriages. Yep. Now, it's everywhere. It's every state, you know, the, uh, without exception. Now, I'd say that was a very big accomplishment. I think so. Yeah. I think so. You know, so we know we have the gay vote. All right? Yeah. We oh, have yeah. the female vote because he's a good-looking guy. Well, probably so. You know, and um, some guys might complain because they're jealous of his good looks. But that's he's it. he's yeah. done pretty good with minorities in California, Latinos and blacks and, yeah. and Asians. And, you know, I, I think you'll have their votes, too. Now, do you think we're going to have our hat handed to us in uh, November because of all of this? Well, <laughs> history is just about all the time when a president happened to Trump too when a president has control of Congress and the midterm elections come along they lose control there have been exceptions though yeah mm -hmm. absolutely you know what 2002 it is? under W they Republicans gained seats in the house yeah yeah well they're going to do it again in 2022 unless you know what it is I pull something out of his hat the public is really a really Idiots. I mean, I don't know. I don't think they should have the right to vote. Okay. I just don't. Because it, if somebody's in office, you know, oh, we don't want Trump. We don't want that kind of thing to happen again. Oh, here's 5 million votes more just to make sure that you get elected, Joe Biden. And then as soon as he's president, everybody's throwing him to the wolves. You know, well, next election, watch, we're going to let you have Congress back. You know, to me, one of the weird things of the Republican Party, they love to say how great Trump was. Yeah. Trump had control of the Congress his first two years, didn't he? Uh, yeah. And, and he couldn't get his wall built and he couldn't get a, a, the Affordable Care Act stopped and he couldn't get a lot of things stopped. Well, he thought he could do everything by writing you know these uh, well, he was used to that that in business you do that he, he's the boss he says what happens congress got got in the way of everything he wanted to do well you know he the, he would write uh, a uh, a pro proclamation and it would go he would think that that was the only way you could get things done the fact is when you write those things the next guy who comes in because they're not written in stone can simply reverse them right and sign his own proclamation. And Biden's reverse. done that. We we rejoin yeah. the uh, uh, yeah yeah yeah. Oh, so, uh, yeah. What you really yeah. want to do, if you want to be effective about it, let's say uh, you don't want this particular thing, you send it to Congress and you get it passed and you make it a law. Right. Then it's not so easy to do away with, you know. Right. But I I just think we're we're a nation full of idiots. If you want my opinion. Uh, and I, uh, I'm really ashamed I even live here, <laughs> to be honest with you. I always have, actually. I just felt we haven't been... You've always lived here or you've always been ashamed? 
I've always been ashamed. <laughs> I've, I've been ashamed of being American. I, it, it, for most of the time of my time here on this planet, you know, the only time I think I liked being an American was when I was in grade school and they had me sing the Pledge of Allegiance every day and I thought everything was hunky-dory. But then all of a sudden I'm in, my, I'm in my teens and they have the House on American Activities Subcommittee and people are losing their jobs because they're accused of being communists and I'm going, what the hell's going on here? That real early lesson when I was like about 13. And, 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 and since then, communist. I've never been happy with the way we solve problems around here. The, the communist thing it was a strange thing for me because we, uh, take Robert Oppenheimer, very, <laughs> very intelligent, taught at Berkeley. They tapped him to run the Manhattan Project. And afterwards, the Manhattan oh, Project. Communist. Wait a minute, in case, in case people don't know, the Manhattan, I know you people do here probably, but uh, the Manhattan Project was the project that created the atom bomb. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. But they but they used him and his knowledge and the people around him and stuff. And then they after he after that was over with, they discredited him and uh he was a communist. He was steps away from uh going to jail, going to prison. What a I mean this country's so fucked up. Yeah. You got you got a, an intelligent mind like this that helps. Well, we're, we're, we've proved over the years that we've very accomplished at, at one thing, if nothing more, and that's witch hunts. You know, I mean, we're doing it right now, you know, with all these people that lose their livelihood just simply because they wrote a tweet uh, uh, 10 years ago that wasn't up to snuff. Right. You know, that's very odd, really. I don't I still don't understand that whole that whole what, what are they calling it? Is it called a woke movement or a, like they're afraid to say anything and you. it's like they just get you erased. I mean, it doesn't make I any have comedians sense. that I know that are afraid. You know, they, they, they don't want to play colleges, for instance, and they're afraid of getting on stage and saying anything uh, that uh, that people would take wrong. I mean, so I was going to ask you this, Alex, and this is a theory I have. I was going to check you this. I'll ask you, though. Can it be, I even asked my brother this, can it be a generational thing? Like the kids in their 20 now, 20s now and I'm in my 50s, maybe it's like the generation has changed and what I thought was funny or entertaining, they don't. I don't know. You know, I'm not a kid and I don't know what they're thinking. Because I'm not a kid anymore either, but I'm wondering like, all right, I'm a kid at heart, but it's like maybe we're not the same generation and it's just like they're offended where I'm not. I don't know. You know what I'm saying? Maybe I'm just old now. Well, to begin with, I'm not even a kid at heart. I'm an old fart. Okay. All right. Let's get, I mean, let's get that straight right now. I could say I was young at heart, but, you know, it ain't going to get me laid, so it doesn't matter. Okay. But here's a question. Oh, by the way, that statement, that statement, by the way, is not woke. And uh, if I had anything to lose by doing this show, uh, uh, that would probably put me in the category of unemployable. Just that little I mean, joke. I, I just don't get it, though, really. I don't Maybe it's just... Well, maybe you, I, you know, we, we just lost uh, Gilbert, Godfrey. Yeah, I heard and, and, and Gilbert, uh, Gilbert... Uh, I think it was Bill Maher. I saw him uh, being interviewed about the death of Gilbert, and he said yeah. uh, Gilbert was um, uh, just a medley of bad decisions when it came to what was politically correct or incorrect, that he didn't really care, and he didn't stop to think about it. You know, uh -huh. he just said, this is funny, this isn't <coughs> funny, I think I'll go do it. He was at the Hugh Hefner Roast on uh, Comedy Central, and he started off, this was about three days after 9-11. Oh, I heard that and one. He, and he starts off by saying, uh, gee, I, I, uh, it's very hard for me to get a flight out to California, but if I do get one, it'll probably stop first at the, uh, at the Empire State Building. You know, and things like, there were a bunch of jokes like that, and yeah. nobody was laughing, and now the audience was booing at him. And that's when he decided to sell, tell the aristocrats joke to take the heat in another direction, you know. Yeah, that was on Kimmel last night, right? Yeah, and then he yeah. also talked about the other time that he got in trouble with Affleck because of, of, because of a tweet that he had about, I think, about China or something. And, you know, really, I always hated Affleck for it because who cares what somebody <laughs> writes in their tweet as long as he's not having the Affleck, he's not doing it in the voice of the Affleck duck. You know, why should you even care? Plus, somebody yeah. did say 
you know, I, I think at one point they finally realized they had hired a comedian. You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. so, I mean, that was a guy who always went off the deep end. And in many cases, it cost him a lot of money. You know, he lost a lot of money on that Affleck deal. And it was the, well, easy, the, the easiest gig in the world. I asked. Uh, I mean, how much work is that, Alex, when he's going to well, do Well, I anything? asked Gilbert. I said, so what happened? You went in. You said Affleck once. They <laughs> recorded it. And then every time they did a commercial, they used the Affleck. And you got a new paycheck for it because it was a yep. new use of that. And he said, no, every time they wanted another Aflac, they brought me back in. Wow. Yeah, and he would go in and do exactly the same voice with the same inflection. And yeah. they say, okay, now the, the, take, take two, Aflac. <laughs> okay, goodbye, Gilbert, we'll see you next <laughs> week. It was something he said, he thought about power, you know. Yeah. Oh, so you gotta come in to get paid. Yeah, you like got to do, you got to do it. Money. You got to do it to give us our money's worth. Yeah, but it was mm -hmm. the easiest gig in the world. He, didn't, he even had the line memorized. You know, so I like that interview. Did he seem really nice to you, Alex? It was nice that, that the interview you did with him that you posted up. He seems like a genuine guy. Like at least in that interview, like believe me, like, Gilbert was not a genuine guy. Oh, Gilbert yeah? was a strange little human being who was very likable. Anyway, he seemed that way. Like he was very, you know. But anyway, so. Um, but just remember, he created his business when he was what? 16 years old? What business? His, when he started. Oh, oh he started in comedy when he was about 16, yeah. He, in fact, yeah. He, quit, he quit high school to do it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's just, it was what most people matured in certain increments. Yeah. He, he jumped. Yeah. yeah, too much that a lot of stuff that he he never even decided I'm not going to do that. Yeah, what well, the heck? I'm just a teenager. Yeah, well, uh, well, he, he, you know, I, I, I think he was amazingly successful, amazingly yeah, successful. I did too. But anyway, I don't want to talk about him now. Yeah, I'm sorry. makes me sad. Um, mm. But anyway, uh, also the other piece of news today, and uh, this is the one that everybody's talking about. You know, they love to find one story, and everybody loves to talk about it. Is uh, Elon Musk and the potential for him buying Twitter? Oh, he's still looking for it. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, still. Oh, Phil wants credit for, uh, right. you know, for uh, being right last night. Being right about what? Uh, uh, you know, he said that he was going to make a move to buy Twitter, you know, and but but that didn't take any thought because, no. you know, at, I mean, the, 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 the business community figured he was going to make a move to buy Twitter. No, we, uh, that was what I was arguing about. It was whether, <clears throat> whether he had uh, stayed on the board or not. And I said, no, he had quit the board. And I had thought that he was going to give up his he, stock. But yeah, he, he wasn't on the board at all. No, he, giving so he a, owned a well, small portion. Reason, then he bought. Yeah. Then he bought nine percent total. No, but they they wanted him to be on the board. That's okay? right. But he and, had other plans. No, well, here's why they t he turned him down, is because, because he wanted to buy the company. No, will you listen to me? I know why. Okay. All you do is read this. He turned it down because he didn't like the fact that in order to um, in order to be on the board. You were required not to be critical of Twitter, mm. and so he didn't want to be have that thrown on him. He well, was, you know, when you're on the board, that you they limit most board of directors and companies to how much stock you can own, too. Yeah, that's what I heard. And and in this case, I think it was eleven percent was the maximum, and he was at nine, and he wanted more. Of the stock. Well, uh, I don't so think that's uh, why he uh, turned down the board. Well, no, he supposedly turned. No, he said he turned it down because of that. Because I he, heard an interview he, he, on on CNN with him last well, night. Well, he so. changes his his. Oh, oh that's story for sure. All the time, but uh, he makes uh, this offer and then he doesn't know if he can afford to pay for it. Mm -hmm. well, Didn't he, matter because Twitter will turn him. Well, down. he's offered forty eight million billion dollars to buy Twitter. Right. Uh, and where is he going to get the money? Out of Tesla. Okay, which has to be okayed by the government before he does it because that could affect the stock on Tesla. 
Yeah, but the, uh, but Twitter, if they haven't already done it, they'll turn him down. It's a game. Well, I mean, he can go for a hostile takeover. Well, that's what he's trying for. Yeah, but they, I, they didn't say we're for sale. Quite frankly, if he asked my opinion, I would say don't do it. Don't buy it for forty eight. That's right. Billion. Buy Facebook. I mean, forty eight billion for Twitter. You, what are you getting? You're not getting a terribly successful company. You're getting a company that has a lot of people using it, but they're not being charged for using it, and they haven't they haven't exactly gotten the advertising to go along with it. So, uh, it's not a good buy. I mean, I that could actually if how much is he worth? Two hundred and twenty five billion dollars, I think it is. I think he's the richest person in the world. No, Putin is. Uh, well, we don't really know what Putin is. Well, in has. fact, Putin in fact, won't uh, admit it. Elon, what did you say? Uh, if Putin won't admit how much money he has. Well, right. he probably has a hell of a lot less right now. Um, mm -hmm. You know, and, and we're, how can he have that much Bitcoin and stay afloat? But yeah, uh, the, the, the poor guy put out a ship and 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 the Ukrainians sunk it with a couple missiles today. Well, they, yeah. I saw a guy today who was a, 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 a in the in the Navy on one of these shows, and they said the number one rule you're taught at Annapolis: the first rule is never lose never lose your flagship. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and that <clears throat> one sunk to the briny deep just a few hours ago. Yep. Yeah caught fire yeah. and they're trying to uh, what's his name putin is trying to say oh no 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 they didn't shoot us down it just caught fire and there were a lot of munitions on there and that was it no what how and we were in a rough storm and that's why it went under how did it catch fire i think because some ukrainians shot something at it they hit it with two harpoon type missiles. Yeah, I mean it's it's it, that is an amazing story of the day. I just think it's amazing how the Ukrainians are prevailing. They actually, the Ukrainians actually developed this device, the <coughs> this missile, and you can you can shoot it from about twenty miles away from the coast mm -hmm. inland, and it'll go out hundred and ninety miles or something like that. Yeah, well, it, and it's it, made specifically for a, a, a surface to ship. You know, no. if I were Putin, I would get out of the Ukraine, get out of Ukraine as fast as is humanly possible, and I'll tell you why. Uh, and that is because it's making Russia look really bad. Now, I don't mean that in the way you think. Of course, they look terrible in what they're doing to Ukraine, but they are so militarily screwed. They are so militarily inept that they're showing that Russia is not a force to be reckoned with. Mm -hmm. You know, when this little puny nation, right, can shoot, uh, can sink your flagship. It wasn't just any flagship. It was called the Moskva, which means Moscow. It was named after the capital city of Russia. Glug, glug. Kevin, what do you, what do you think? We were talking about this the other night privately. That you know, I think we take Russia too seriously, don't we? Yeah, looks like it. Yeah, yeah. I think we should just go over there and bomb the shit out of them. Yeah, well, I agree. I agree. <laughs> and I'm, I'm, I'm. No, I saw a meme today that showed that what they say. They said, uh, "Oh, the warship was just promoted to submarine." <laughs> That's cute. <laughs> That's cute. That's cold. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's true. Uh, you know, it's always nice when you hear something like that. Um, what did I see here? Somebody wrote something. I'm trying to remember what I saw here that somebody wrote on our, our chat. Hold on. Let me see here. Uh, uh, nah, I don't know. I don't, I don't see it. I, I'm trying to remember what it was. Uh, but, uh, you know, um, I, I, I just, uh, you know, I just think it's... Uh, uh, that was happening over there. We're just we're going to have to answer to a higher power someday about the way we handled that. You know, I mean, what, you, you come to the rescue of people where where genocide is concerned and where um, uh, 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 they're trying to. He's trying to obliter obliterate them. Uh, it's just you know it's terrible, and we don't do anything about it. What happened <laughs> to our good guy status? You know, 
I guess yeah. it doesn't really matter, you know. So. Well, thank you, folks. Nice having you here. Goodbye. Yeah. What? Yes, Charlie. I wanted to mention, you mentioned about the chat. About the I did get an update today from Will, Will Durst. Oh, I, that's what I wanted to talk about. Yeah. 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 Um, I talked to Will today. Hmm. I not talked to him in a while. And I, uh, I asked him how things go, and he said, well, he said, the leg is still killing me, but we know why now. Mm -hmm. Now, his leg, they've been keeping him from going home because his leg has been just, he's been in great pain with his leg. And they feel it was also a result of the stroke. And he, they've been going on with that theory for, what, maybe a year or something? A year, he said. Yeah. 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 In the update, yeah. And all of a sudden, he goes to the doctor one day and says, oh, this leg is killing me. Look, do me a favor. Will you just take an x-ray of it, a simple x-ray, and take a look at it? And they looked at it, and they said, oh, you've got a broken hip. <laughs> what? He says, yeah, he says, I have a broken hip, and they have to replace the ball socket. And I'm going, you mean for an entire year they've kept you in that hospital bed because you can't walk? And all along, he says, yeah, I asked him over and over again, will you just take an x-ray of it? Take an x-ray of it. And finally, this one doctor, you know, wanted to just calm me down and said, okay, what, what can it do? We just take well, it. Well, humor him. <laughs> and they took Great me, way to get an infection. He, he had a broken hip. I mean, a great way to get an infection. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. But, I mean, so finally he's going to have the hip replacement, and then he's going to have to go through some physical therapy for it. And hopefully mm -hmm. he can get going back home, you know. And and also, he's been living with pain for a year. Yeah, a year. I mean, what kind of – I believe his doctors are Kaiser. I think that's the problem. Or, uh, there's Larry Bubbles Brown referred to Kaiser uh, – Permanente, the health insurance comp group, uh, which my I used to belong to when I was a kid. My parents belonged to it. Um, but uh, uh, Bubbles, um, used to, we used to have them as a sponsor. And you say, this new, this traffic news is brought to you by Kaiser Permanente. And one morning we almost lost them because he said, B B Kaiser uh, also known as doctor assisted suicide. <laughs> <laughs> well, they had a, the Kaiser used to have a, a saying, good people, good medicine. And then somebody added good luck. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, you know, I mean, how, how, what, what kind of moronic doctors do you have that don't say, well, you know, let's at least look and see if there might be something there. You know, I mean, take x-rays. How easy are x-rays to take? Yeah. You know, uh, hell, I go in and have x-rays done on my hand and they just put my hand in something for about two seconds and I go into the other room and they, they look at it, you know? Uh, and all, it's, it, it really, it only proves that most people, if you, if you have something wrong with you, take charge of your own medicine and insist that things be done, you know? Yeah. And don't mind if the doctor thinks you're a pain in the ass because the one time you're not a pain in the ass, it turns out that they you 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 came up with the answer, you know. So anyway, um, so uh, let me see here. What else? Anything else happening? What else is, uh, is new? Oh yeah, and then we got this. The RSS Black <laughs> Club, huh? Is that the new name of the ship? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. But um, Love, Club. also the other thing uh, today, the other thing's been happening, happened here in New York. And that's that guy in the subways. Who, yeah. Who, you can't get over that. You, you can't get over it? Why? Were you on, were you on that, that subway he, car? I, why, can't, why can't you get over it? I, I told my brother, the city's cheap, Alex. I don't believe he called himself in. They better give that reward to those people. No, he called himself in, and he should he get really do that. He, he was charging his phone at McDonald's. Come wait, on, wait. <laughs> he called from McDonald's. He said That's he what was, they say. He was running out of charge in his phone, but yeah. that he's at that McDonald's. Come and get me, okay? And then, uh, when and, they went, and, he and my immediate thought was, well, then doesn't <laughs> doesn't he get the reward? <laughs> That's what you I know, 
Huh? But you know what's he'll, funny? He'll probably represent himself too. He's so smart. No, I not. heard yeah. Alex. I heard his rant on YouTube before they took it down. Really? It was riveting. He, he was at a Motel Six and he did a number two. He said and he clogged the toilet. He blamed the guy. He said it was the guy that gave me a bad room because I'm black. No, he probably took a massive shit in the fucking bowl. <laughs> <laughs> Like, this guy is crazy. <laughs> well, wait, a minute, wait a minute. Hold on a second. Let me just get this straight, uh, yeah. uh, 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 Tony. Uh, mm-hmm. The guy goes into a subway, throws in a smoke bomb, then starts <laughs> yeah. firing something like 40 rounds into a crowd oh, on the subway me. car, and mm-hmm. you say you think maybe he might be crazy? <laughs> You're right. He's definitely Alex. Oh, he's crazy. I'm watching that video. Oh my god! I love it when they say, "Oh no, he's not crazy. No, he can be tried." You know what he he's saying video? he's really saying anybody who does that's crazy. <laughs> and all you and have you to know, do is look at the guy. Come on. And you know what my brother told me? I thought he was pulling my leg. In the uh, in that rap sheet, like the poster, they had him listed as five five. Charlie, no pun intended. How many black people do you know of five five? <laughs> I mean, really. <laughs> He was six two. Chris, How did they get that wrong? Chris Rock. That's he true. got he got slapped down to five five. <laughs> but Alex, he in that YouTube video, boy, you're you're right. He was totally out there. I was like, oh um, I, I didn't see it, but the fact is, I mean, come on, it, what that was a totally sane act. Come on. <laughs> Oh, no, I was, it was like a thing out of a bad movie. No, I, I read, if he was sane, he would have been a better shot. Killed yeah. some. I, I bet. Uh, but anyway, I, I read that Bethany Frankel. Do you know who Bethany Frankel is? Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, she's uh, one of the housewives of New York City or something, and she's been mm-hmm. around for the longest time as a. Uh, I don't know what she really does for a living. I think she's just Bethany Frankel. And that's it. <clears throat> but anyway, she said she, she's too frightened to live here, so she's leaving New York. And I'm thinking, <laughs> to begin with, you know, how often does this happen on the subway? Yeah, I mean, that's right. Bernie Getz is the last time I remember. Uh, occasionally, you know, occasionally somebody will, uh, uh, you know, throw somebody in front of a oncoming train. Oh, yeah, that, that's, yeah, now know. they've been throwing people like it's nothing, really. I don't want to laugh about you, it. You know, but what but I'm saying is still... The subways are pretty safe. Yeah, you know, right. no. What I mean, are you afraid to? Now that this happened the other day, you're afraid to take a subway. Well, my brother's going to drop me off by Shecky's, but on the way home, I'm going to take the subway. And I took the subway two weeks ago to look at a comic collection, but I took an Uber there to Richmond Hill. But then I took the subway back. Why you but didn't, it was buy, you didn't buy the comic there. collection? <laughs> buy a church, and I says, "Oh, there's the subway. I don't want to pay twenty dollars." I says, "It's three o'clock. I'm going to run to the subway." So I ran up and took the uh, R. Yeah. But anyway, but I don't I don't go close to the rails. I, I sit down on the booth. I'll, I'm more observant. I'll sit on the wood what thing. What I'm and saying I'll, is, are you afraid of taking? I'm a little yourself? scared. Yeah, you on the are? thing, I'll kind of in, a little bit. I kind of if I see people I don't like, I move to the other side. How many hundreds of thousands of people a day does that train system yeah. run without incident? You know, just wake up, day. Tony. You know, I it mean, runs look, for years it's without very it. safe. Well, let's just take that incident. How many people got shot? Something like fifteen people got shot. Yeah, nobody died, thank God. Yeah, mm-hmm. but 15... how many people got shot in New York that weren't in the subway? Uh, yeah. Probably more than that <laughs> yesterday. Yeah, yeah, probably. Yeah, so I'd be worried about being above ground instead of underground. All Absolutely. I'm saying is, is that this city, for the size of it and the enormity mm-hmm. of it, uh, and the uh, um, un, well, the mental health in the city isn't that great. Yeah, you're right. That's a when, big whenever issue. you're all you know you're living in a city where all we, all of us are compressed in on each other. You know, I think we we do pretty well, all things considered. You know, but when something like this happens, all of a sudden, all the news people, every news station stops, right, and it's wall to wall subway shooter news, right, and I'm thinking. Uh, let's let's just take uh, uh, Kevin. He's sitting there out in California. All of a sudden, he turns on MSNBC to see what's happening in the news today, and you're getting wall-to-wall coverage of the shooting in the subways in New York City. Do you really give a shit? <laughs> That's what I'm saying. I always got very mad when I lived in San Francisco. 
And all of a sudden I turn on the news and know oh, something happened in New York City. So it was the most important thing in the world. New York has always got to be bigger than everything. At that point, about. the whole world stops at the Hudson River, you know. Uh, and, and I just went, somebody sitting out in Omaha and he, he's watching this and he's going, okay, but can I find out what's happening elsewhere? Yeah. Can I find out what's what happening in, in, in Ukraine again today? Can I find out what's happening in Washington? Can I, you know, there are a whole bunch of other <clears> things you <throat> could be talking about. I mean, you care about what's going on for a little bit, but then you find out and then you move on. But you don't want to hear it for the next two hours. No. And that's what happens anytime something happens. Yeah. <laughs> And then, and then and they you get to watch words. it over and over and over. The same train shot from somebody's video and, camera. And, and, on there, and, there, and, there's, and there's no new news. So they have to pretend like there's always new news or it might break at any moment. And it's always breaking news. That's what drives me nuts. <laughs> what Everything they, is breaking news all day long. If I, 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 I will have to hand it to CNN. I went over to CNN and they were doing other news as well. Huh. They, they I like were. CNN. Yeah, they you know what I was wondering? News. I know this may sound stupid. I wonder if he did have a Big Mac though. Down there. I was wondering what he ate. What do you the mean? Big... He, I'm sure Why he... does it make a difference? It's after I just the fact. Know, just, just, you know, what did he have? <laughs> well, he only had a couple of dollars on him, so he probably had to get the Happy Meal. Well, you yeah. could, I, you know, imagine he get the toy surprise. He went nuts. <laughs> I'm getting out of here, ready, bro. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't want to be Alex. When I you know, my Tony, I he ate in McDonald's out. after he did the crime. I so you can't blame Tony McDonald's did. on the crime. Uh, it just goes to show you those. It's the dollar meals. You could eat at McDonald's and have like no money on you, really. Is there really a dollar meal? I have. I don't I, think anything is so dollar. long since dollar I've been menu. At There's items for a dollar, but not not. A dollar what, menu. What's for a dollar? What, one Mc... I'm gonna pull it up. Huh? I think you might be getting a regular hamburger for a dollar. A yeah. cup of coffee, a soda, you know. Oh, an ice cream, mate. No, you can't get the Sunday for a dollar. One like McNugget. It. Oh, I love the nuggets. Yeah, you can't even get an order fries for a dollar, can you? Love those. <laughs> oh, Do you have any idea yeah. what those McNuggets are? I don't you know. But what part of the bigger. chicken is the McNugget? Is the old <laughs> comedy joke? You could do one, I tell you the that. chicken's ass, probably. Yeah. Chicken's lips. <laughs> <laughs> I hate when you bite down on the McNugget and you get a beak stuck between your teeth. But anyway, so I mean, I I uh, I I think that uh, uh, that whole story was overly done. You know, I mean, I was sick of it after two hours, and I live here. You know what I was shocked? I went to your page and you were out walking around. This is, this is a killer. I told How someone, many times did they play the over world. and over on all the stations when the World Trade Center got hit? I and only had to watch it once to believe it, you know? Really? It that went on for days and days and days. Oh, look, the second plane's about ready to hit it. Well, I can look, I can I, I, I got to tell you, that incident, I was in California when it happened. And I was riveted to the TV set for yeah, you know, me too. forty-eight me too. hours. I mean, me too. I mean, I, yeah. You know, I mean, that no, a... that wasn't one of those stories that because it happened in New York. It was how spectacular. I mean, I imagine that uh, mm -hmm. what's his name, uh, Osama bin Laden, was sitting over there in his cave in Tora Bora, <laughs> yeah, watching his cable TV because they get cable in those caves. They get cable. Yeah. I do the same thing, Kevin. I turn my water upside down a couple times to make sure it's mixed. But Alex, you think he, there's a no big chunk of ice in the bottom? Oh, okay. Do you think he would have thought those towers were going to come down? Well, no. What I'm saying is, <clears throat> is that he sat there and he saw these towers coming down and going, "Oh fuck, how do we do that?" Well, the terrorists, according to what the news said, the terrorists thought that they that they would do damage. The planes would hit and knock part of the tower over. Really? Nobody. Yeah. Nobody really thought, thought that, that was going to happen, and nobody um, and nobody just, thought it was going to collapse. Not just one, both of them. Yeah. Okay, so there were two of them that went. That's down. A, a structural failure. The heat. Yeah. Uh, you know, with the with the 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 structure, the metal, it overheated but the I, metal, but, and but I think it was absolutely amazing. I think it was just incredible uh, that 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 happened to that extent. But the fact was that that was. That was a pretty spectacular event. That that was oh, not absolutely. like a, that was not like some big fat guy going down in the subway and shooting fifteen people. You absolutely. Know? This was like planes hitting those towers and them coming down like you know, 
just pancaking all the very way down. Very sad. Very sad. Very sad. I right, had a guy that worked for me in my head. office that worked for me that was from New York, and he knew exactly where it was, what was going on. His mom was out here, out there, and the whole bit. So he was just totally free. He was turning white and getting sick. Well, I, I was at home in San Francisco. Yeah. And this was about 7 o'clock in the morning, uh, my time. Mm-hmm. And all of a sudden, my phone, I'm sleeping, and my phone rings, and I pick it up, and it's Shecky, my friend Shecky. And he said, are you watching television right now? And I go, no. He says, turn it on. And he said, when I turned it on. And he said, uh, and I said, what's this all about? He said, a airliner plowed into one of the World Trade Center buildings. And I went, oh, my God. I said, wow, how did that accident happen? He says, nobody knows. And then all of a sudden, as I'm watching TV, the second oh, plane God. goes yeah. slamming into the tower. And my yeah, first words, so? my first words out to Shecky were, "Well, I guess it isn't an accident." No, <laughs> no. Nope. Yeah, Alex. My dad wasn't at the trade center that day, but he worked there. I saved his badge when when he retired. So, mm-hmm. World Trade Center. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Church Street. He knew his his uh, boss died. He went in to get the people out, yeah. but he never came out. But, the only person in his company died. Yeah. But my joke, my joke at the time was that uh, you know. There's part of me that goes, this is a horrible tragedy. And the other part of me goes, what a great aesthetic choice. Because there was nobody that loved those buildings mm-hmm. in New York I, City. I was in them in 1999 when I was visiting New York. They were ugly. Somebody once referred to them as the boxes the computers came in. Yeah. You know, I like the way they looked. <laughs> there was an ugly... Alex, what was that antenna were... on top of the roof, do you know? What? Was that... The, the antenna on top of the trade center was that a radio antenna or is that just those were, te- those were te- all the television oh, stations? Yeah, that was the television, television, radio, all kinds of stuff. I always remember when we used to drive by. I remember seeing that in when fact, you see the picture. In that fact, I knew, I knew somebody who who knew the guys. There was a guy. They always sent guys from the TV stations and the radio stations up there to watch the transmitters. And oh. uh, several of the TV stations and radio stations lost people in the World Trade Center collapse because you know. That's I have I have a friend of mine. His name's Frank Martin. He works on that type of stuff on high rises, and he's climbed up some of these tall buildings, mm-hmm. you know, 150 feet on the on the antenna on the, in New York. Mm-hmm. And I'm like, you don't have a fear of heights, do you? Mm-hmm. I, I get on I get on a ladder and I'm nervous. Oh, yeah, I I just you know it, it's I couldn't get up on an antenna. It's 150. Oh, there, there are people. Off. There are people who I mean I know have working radio, who actually work transmitters. It will actually go to the top of transmitters to like there's a light on oh, the yeah. top of most transmitters so planes won't hit them, and yep. they, the light goes out. They go up there. Uh, yeah. You know? Change the bulb. And I'm going, boy, you could never get me to do that. That's one of the jobs I just would not want to have. This friend of mine had access to the Hancock building in Chicago, mm-hmm. and we were there for an event, and we all went to dinner in the in the building, a huge lightning storm. He says, you guys want to go on the roof? I'm like, uh-uh. But everybody <laughs> went, so I went, and I just stood at the door. And he's like leaning over the building with his little camera taking pictures, and I'm like, oh, no, you ain't getting me that close to the edge of the, the building. Yeah. Well, anyway, hey, listen, there goes our theme song. Mm-hmm. Better known as our theme song. Are you getting on Jack's show to correct him with all his... Uh, no, <laughs> no I, I will be listening at a distance here, uh, getting apoplectic at some of his misinformation. But anyway, uh, I love the guy, but, you know. I, I, what was Lorena Bobbitt's last name before she was married? <laughs> You know? Oh, Jack, Jack the Knife. I mean, everybody knows that, right? Yeah, oh. right. Anyway, thank you, Jeff, for being here. Appreciate it. Always a pleasure. You're welcome, man. Uh, and, and hey, we got we we got uh, Charlie two nights in a row. Not no more baseball. Is it over? I got. I'm off for two weeks, so I'll be here Ooh. all next hey. week. Okay. And thank you very much, Alan. Thank you, uh, Kevin. Always nice having you here, and Tony. Yeah, have more coffee, why don't you? You didn't have much tonight. Yeah, anyway, everybody give a big wave goodbye, and I'll give a big wave goodbye at you. Okay, there they go, ladies and gentlemen. That's our uh, that's our citizen panel. There they go. Uh, Jack Bishop is next here with the intersection. Uh, he'll be taking your calls. 
and, and, and your answers to trivia questions uh, at, uh, on Skype at GabNet Live. Uh, I'll, uh, you know, I'm going to be hanging around here doing a few things, and then I'm going to go to sleep, and then I'm going to wake up tomorrow, and I'm going to do a few more things in here, and then I'm going to leave here, and then I'm going to come back at 10.30, same time, same station in life in the meantime, as always. <laughs> oh, God. If you see her, tell her I love her, okay? Good night, everybody. <laughs> <laughs>